Hey, I'm Chris, and I'm the guy who makes this suburb game that I've been posting about recently on this channel. Now, one of the things I've been asked about a lot is how I get the animation so smooth for the main character, and I figured I'd just make a quick video about it to show you exactly what I do to get that. Okay, so first things first, just know that this isn't scripted or anything, this is kind of just an impromptu video about showing generally what I do, so I apologize for lack of nice structure and professionalism, but I'll do the best I can. Alright, here goes. So, this is my project here, obviously. Here's all the sprites I have for Dungeon, the main character currently. I'm just going to show you how I went from sprites like this to sprites that are more like this. Now, as you can see, in cases such as this and like this, it would be nearly impossible to draw out every frame by hand it would take forever, especially for people like me who aren't actually really animators. So what I did instead, using my years of practice making special effects, I used After Effects here. What I did was, I took all the parts of the body apart, like each of these as you can see here, and imported them as their own piece here setting their little origin at the point where the joint would be. I also scaled them up ten times, which I'll explain a little bit later. But then what I did was, I made this here, the control object, which has a bunch of these angle slider things, and I mapped each of these to their corresponding rotation thing, as you could see here. Sorry for saying things so much. I, it's not really. I'm not really articulate this early in the afternoon. Anyways, so that way, when you're in the control object here, you can modify these to move the different parts of the body in a smooth fashion. And then what you could do with that is come in here. And you can actually keyframe these different parts so that in cases such as this you could have a single smooth movement between the two points and the good thing about this is when you're rendering it out you could put any number of frames into this and any subframe would be perfect scaling, so it could be perfectly smooth at any speed, fast or slow. So I'll show you an example right here. This is the running animation. As you can see, there's lots and lots of keyframes down here. So then what I would do so I'd render it out as a bunch of ping images here. Dropbox, Studio, Resources, Animate. For example, the run running animation looks like this. Now, see the important thing about making it at ten times speed, like I mentioned before, or ten times size, is that when it animates it has these nice hard edges as opposed to being pixel edges so that way when it gets diagonal and whatnot it looks nice and crisp when you scale it back down as I'll show you in a second um, so what I do is I would load in all of these at once you can see there's 119 currently, and it'll take a few seconds, or one. And then 
since I already got this nice smooth animation I scale it down poor make sure you do that because that takes nearest neighbor scaling that way it has nice crisp edges and not blur I scale it back down to its regular size and doing that I have all these nice outlines and everything I'll show you if I don't scale using that you got all these gross edges and glows and blurs when it gets in between pixels so that's basically the extent of the process I then take that small image that I just made I let it run in the engine set it to image speed of one so that way it's one frame per frame of per frames per second so that way it's smooth and that way I could scale down the number of sub images because having an image speed of four or something is really not necessary because then it just skips over those images and you never actually see them and that wastes space and so the very last thing that I do in this process is I make sure to put them all in the same texture group so that way how texture groups work is you can only have a few pages in memory at one time and if you need to retrieve an image from a different texture group it could take a quick stutter to load in that so I make sure they're all in the same thing so they're all loaded up at the same time <coughs> and that's basically it um, I can't really think of anything else to add to that that's pretty much the process and yeah alright well thanks for watching if I missed any glaringly obvious things please let me know and I'll revise this alright see you later